Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and my first Halloween video of 2024. I am beyond excited. You can probably hear it. My face, I am grinning from ear to ear. The bowl mold we're using in today's video is from Shein and we're going to be using some of our dried autumnal flowers, but I wanted black. I wanted black flowers, but oosh, the price I was not prepared to pay. And they're not all black. You still get cream in there. So I had a plan. We're going to DIY our flowers. This mold is giving the birds film kind of vibes. And we're going to be using this one as well. This is a Finna Bear mold from Prima. But step number one, we're going to paint our flowers black because yes I'm tight <laughs> I really wanted similar kinds of flowers for this bowl that I used in my autumnal bowls but could not find them in black and again I didn't want to pay it was like 13 14 pounds for just a few black dried flowers that also came with white flowers I didn't want that <laughs> I didn't want that so we're going to paint them. Now, you can put acrylic paint in resin. There is a slight chance it bleeds, but you can actually colour your resin with acrylic paint. So I figured it would be absolutely fine. I'm just using a sponge down on a piece of paper to dab. Check it out already. I mean, it's already spooky Halloween vibes. Look at it gorgeous I just carried on I started off using some burnt sienna acrylic paint but mm, I wanted it more darker I like dark moody Halloween if you've been with me more than one Halloween you'll know I'm not really into the cutesy cutesy like bright colors and all of that for Halloween I love the dark moody like witchy Halloween so everything is getting painted in black. I'm using my sponge, like I said, and I'm gently dabbing these flowers because I was worried they look so fragile, but actually they all held up pretty well. And I just kept on going until each and every petal, each and every leaf was completely coated. And I, guys, I'm not gonna lie, I was buzzing at this point. When I realized how well they were taking the paint, I realized we're all good. This is going to work. So yeah, excitement. Look at these. How gorgeous are they? Now, again, you could do this for anything. It doesn't have to be a bowl that you're making. You could put these in coasters, in pendants, like how haunting. They look haunting. And that is the look I was going for. So everything is dried now. We're going to make our birds. These are birds I made earlier, true Blue Peter style. I wanted to see if my theory was going to work first before we made them. Now, if you are making anything like this to create your own bowl, you can, of course, use epoxy resin. You can get a super fast curing epoxy resin now. It's like two hours. You can get that from Just For You Online. I am going to be using the black polyurethane purely for speed. If you don't have black polyurethane, go ahead and use the fastest curing epoxy resin that you can. And then that will just speed up the whole project for you. If not, go for your 24 hour epoxy resin. But you do need to keep an eye on it because we need these birds to be bendy. We need them to be flexible to do what we want them to do, which is why I'm going with the poly and it means I can just sit here and kind of have a feel, you know, like have a feel to see if they're solid enough to demold, but bendy enough to bend because I need, I need them to bend. I cannot tell you how much I loved making this video. And I have to say, these are probably some of the most stunning effects I have ever gotten from a Halloween project. So I truly hope you love it as much as me. So again, back to the video, I've mixed my polyurethane for 30 seconds. I'm now pouring it. You have to work fast, act fast with this stuff, um, which is a downside. It is a downside. You don't have to panic like that when you're using epoxy. I'm filling every cavity of the mold, but I kind of did run low on the polyurethane towards the end because it started thickening up on me. And I ended up 
kind of giving up at this point. It was getting really hot in the cup and I had the teeniest, tiniest little birds to fill and I knew I wouldn't do a very good job. So I used my lollipop stick to scrape across the top of the mold, which yes, created mess, but it got all of that thinner poly down into those smaller cavities where I needed it. So this, I want to say, it's about eight to 10 minutes after pouring. Now they can come out. So I've moved all of my pre-made things out of the way. You have to be careful here. You don't want to rip it, but they are ready to come out. Equally, they're still really bendy and that is what you want you want to you want to get them right in that middle ground so they can come out but they're bendy bendy and yes oh my gosh they're so beautiful so so beautiful now of course because I used that wooden lollipop stick to scrape across the surface there is mess there's a little bit of kind of like thin flaky overspill on some of them so just go around the edge using a gloved hand because they're not cured at this point using your gloved hand and just peel off any wispy bits that you might see that would take away from the end result and they are done now I want them to fully cure but I want them to cure in the bowl I want them to be rounded slightly around the edge of the bowl we are going for a moody dark haunting scene inside the bowl you can tell I was so excited for this here's the thing <laughs> sounds easy guys head first pattern outside that is the order of which you want to put these in Claire, come on, it's not rocket science. Guys, I know it's not rocket science, but do you know how my brain could not cope with this simple task? I want the birds to solidify and fully cure in the position of which I'm going to be placing them back in the bowl. And of course, if I put them the wrong way, they're going to be bent the wrong way. So <laughs> head first, down in, and the pattern has to be on the outside of the the field yeah I'm, I'm I'm making it sound more complicated than it is but let me tell you something as much as I stared at these birds and I was looking at the bowl like okay that's definitely yeah that's got to go in that way because when we flip the bowl around they're going to be up the other way and then but if I put it in that way it's going to be upside down when we demold honestly you would think someone had asked me to take an algebra test like that is how my brain was being fried look at me I'm literally like um yeah has it got to go that way is it that way yeah it's that way <laughs> it took me a minute guys but yeah we got there in the <laughs> you can see me trying to work it out we got there in the end we got there in the end and even then there was at least one at least one bird that I had to take out and put back in the right way because <laughs> you think you've got it and then you just don't have it as I'm putting them in I'm you can see me I'm squishing the side of the bowl I want these birds to take on that curved contour of the outer bowl now the only reason I'm doing that is because once these pieces are fully cured if they're flat then they'll dig out they'll dig out of the sides of the bowl because the bowl, the bowl is curved. Here are some pieces I've made earlier that have solidified in that curved state. So you can see here, it does follow the edge of the bowl and it will go back in real nicely. So that is why I'm allowing all of my birds to cure inside the bowl. Once they have cured, it is time to highlight them. I am using a really silly method, but it works. It really, really works. What I wanted to use at this point was some silver acrylic paint and or some of my silver embellishing wax. But could I find it? No, no, of course I couldn't find it. Um, It has been packed. It's in one of 30 something boxes so I was not going to try and find it I decided if I couldn't have acrylic paint and I couldn't have my embellishing wax it had to be this pen this is the metallic deco color pen and oh 
my goodness me, it worked a dream for the highlighting. And the best part is it dried instantaneously. So if you are in a hurry, you'd have to wait for acrylic paint to dry. You'd have to wait for the wax to dry. But this pen, game changer absolute game changer for highlighting any raised areas that you wanted to highlight. Now the reason I'm highlighting is because I'm putting so much darkness, so much darkness into this bowl. I want to know that I'm going to see my birds. If I just put them in with absolutely no highlights whatsoever, I feel like they're going to get lost. They're going to just be disguised in the background and you won't really see the detail that I'm craving. Look at this bundle of yumminess on the table right now, guys, I couldn't even cope. It's time, in the words of Mariah Carey, um, it's time to lay this bowl up, layer it up. Um, now, when I've done my previous bowls for autumn, you would know I dipped each and every one of my dried flowers and leaves, I dipped it in resin before I put it down into the sides of the bowl. I decided not to do that this time. My resin is currently sitting in a bucket of hot water because it was freezing cold on this day. The temperatures plummeted. This was back in August, filmed back in August. Um, the temperatures plummeted, so my resin did go into a hot bath. And I was hoping that that would be enough, that I wouldn't have to dip my flowers. But here we go again, <laughs> me, me trying to work out what way around the birds have to go back in. And I cannot explain to you how hard my brain found it. It's like asking someone to write upside down and back to front. It, it wasn't working for me, but we did get there in the end. And I'm happy to report we did not have any birds flying upside down. So win-win. I mean, that's a success story right there. I had an absolute plan for this bowl. Sometimes if you guys are with me and we've got that chuck it all in technique and you know, I'm putting no thought into it at all. I did put thought into this. I wanted one or two birds and then some flowers, more birds, flowers, birds, flowers. And I wanted it alternated around the rim of the bowl. So there was an equal kind of share of birds versus flowers. I wanted it to look like the birds were flying in amongst like a haunted forest or flying in amongst trees. And so I wanted there to be a good amount of both. Now you'll see, you might have missed it, but I've just seen it now on my voiceover. I put a bird in the wrong way. I put it in the wrong way. So when we demold, we'll just see the flat background of the bird. And it, it was so obvious when I looked, I held the bowl up and I thought, well, that bird doesn't look right at all compared to all of the other birds. So I went in, you can kind of see it there. See it? It's really black. I pulled it out and I realized the shiny back is what we would have seen. Now you can also see, I didn't highlight this one. I, I left some unhighlighted. I just wanted to, because you know, I've never done this before. Just wanted to test it, see what it looked like. I would fully recommend highlighting guys. <laughs> Hindsight is a wonderful thing. Highlight, highlight, highlight. This is me shoving my finger down the side of the bowl to feel that each and every bird that I had put in this bowl is now in the right way. I can feel the pattern on the outside knowing that they're in the right way. What should be the most simplest of tasks turned in to something that was unnecessarily long? But let me know if you do try to make a bowl like this. Let me know how you found that how you found it. If you struggled like I did, my brain could not work it out. But we got there in the end, we got there. I'm just using scissors to trim off any of the excess leaves and twigs that are poking out of the top because we definitely do not want that. You can of course wait until the end to do that. But this is what we're looking like. We have got haunted forests, we have got birds all packed in there. And the best thing is they're kind of keeping each other in there. So nothing is going to float now powders. Oh my goodness me. I have this powder here. This again, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Resin Pro Mica. One of my favorite purples. I'm almost out, so that makes me cry. I'm going to be using a combination of purples, blacks, and silvers here. I'm also using some of this super sparkle white in the black mica to bring it to life a bit. 
I was going to use some light purple, you'll see it on screen, and silver, but I ended up not going with those colour combinations. Um, do I regret it? I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Let me know what you think at the end. This is the giant mixing cup from Let's Resin. This is the only vessel I have that can handle the amount of resin I need for this bowl mold. Now I am simply using the Apex resin. You don't need a deep pour resin when you're making a, a mold like this. You might think you need deep pour because it's a big mold, but you really don't. The walls are so thin, you can just use your standard resin for coasters. Works a dream. And I mix this resin for a solid five minutes because there's just so much of it. I want to make sure that this is totally and utterly combined and fully mixed. And I am not making any judgments or mistakes there because that is the one area I need to make sure I've mixed it. Now, if you watched my autumn bowl videos, I made one where there wasn't much clear space. And then I made a second one just with the aim of getting some more clear space. I think I preferred the one that had the more, that the most clear. And that is the look I was going for here. So I wanted a solid inch, inch and a half of clear resin down in the mold before I did anything else. That was my goal. That was my plan. I wanted to pour quite a lot of clear so that we could see, you know, all of that effort we've gone to with the birds and painting all of the flowers and the leaves. I want to see it. I don't want to cover this up. I'm more than happy if some of it gets covered and we see hints. But what I don't want is to completely and utterly lose every single piece of detail that we've put into this bowl. So I am very, very generous here with the clear resin. And I'm just moving the bowl, helping that resin travel all the way around that rim to coat and cover everything that we've put in so far. So I did, I was very, very generous with the clear. And at one point I did think, maybe I've put too much clear, but no, it was fine. It, I absolutely hadn't. So now it is time to mix up our colours. This is the Purple Resin Pro I was telling you about. Hands down, I could stand on top of a mountain and scream at the top of my lungs that this is hands down my favourite purple mica ever, ever that existed. Again, this is not sponsored. I bought the Resin Pro powders myself. It just so happens that they are my favourite. And it is the most sublime, rich, dense, stunning, luxurious purple I've ever worked with. And sadly, I'm now all out of it. So I will be purchasing more. <laughs> Next up, we went with the silver foil and then we went with the black mica. The black mica is our taser. I still have a ton of Arteza micas that they sent me like five years ago. Unreal, like still going strong. I'm using the black and into the black, I have put in some of the Super Sparkle White because yeah, I just wanted it to be a little bit more thingy. I mean, it's really gray as well, isn't it? It doesn't even look black at this point, but look at that purple. I can't even cope with how stunning that purple is. Now here you see me lifting the sides of the mold. That may or may not have been a mistake. And even pushing the sides of the mold as well, not sure what I thought was going to come from that because I really was looking for a lot, a lot of clear. Um, so if you do move that or manipulate the side of the mold at all, you are risking getting rid of the clear and you're you're kind of encouraging all of the colors to move down. This, look at my hands. This is me saying, oh, juicy, juicy, gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> All of the gorgeous, gorgeous patterns that are created with that purple mixing in with the black. Love, 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 love that. So yeah, you could see my hands kind of going, ooh, yummy, yummy. Um, but yeah, this is what it is looking like. I filled the mold right to the very top. Using a heat mat, this cured instantaneously. Well, instantaneously, eight hours later. Are you ready? Are you even ready for this? Now here's the thing, similarly to the autumn bowl, it was very hard to get really good images of this without showing you the double chin action that is going on on my neck right now. So I did my best. Stunning, absolutely 
Like, I couldn't stop looking at it. Did we lose some birds? Yes. Did we lose some flowers? Yes. I was really actually quite surprised. The purple and the black did take over more than I thought they would. And they made it all the way to the rim of the bowl. We don't have any clear rim at the top. We've got clear underneath it. Look at this guy. Ooh, I'm obsessed, guys. I am obsessed. I immediately took a, took a video and I posted it to my patrons. This was like weeks ago now. But look at this dude. This little guy is just floating in the clouds of like a moody thunderstorm. It is giving dark horror movie, the birds, dark haunted house, haunted woodland, thunderstorm, moody skies, dark nights, Halloween. It is giving everything I wanted it to give and more. Do I wish there was more clear? Yes, I cannot lie. I cannot pretend. I wish there was more clear. But there are some sections that are just so stunning. I couldn't even cope with what my eyes were looking at. Hints of those birds coming through. Thank goodness I highlighted the majority of them because I would have totally lost every single bird if I didn't highlight. Look at these two guys. They, these two guys just hanging out in the thunder clouds. Like, I... Yeah, the only thing I was so gutted about was the fact that I couldn't get the camera to pick up what my eyes were seeing. But I hope you guys can get a feel for what it is I created here. Even these flowers, some of the paint has bled. You can see here, zooming in, some of that paint did bleed and they've almost gone like an orangey colour. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. But yeah, this guy here just hanging out, waiting for the lightning. Like, I cannot. It is giving Edgar Allan Poe this section. Stunning. The clarity on the resin. Stunning. The way the dark clouds are rolling in on this moody, dark, thundery stock. I cannot. Like, I could go on and on, but just gonna let you guys take it all in because I am fully obsessed <laughs> look at it just look at it <laughs> I understand this might not be everybody's cup of tea but this is right up my street I am definitely gonna attempt this again I'm not gonna lie um I'm doing this voiceover back in August we may or may not have moved by the time this video comes out, we may be packing up. So I don't know what I'm still going to have available to film another bowl before we do move. I can tell you this though, there might be a gap. There might be a little gap in my videos coming out. However, I will be still sharing videos with you because I'll be filming from my brand new craft room in our brand new house, touch wood. Do you guys say touch wood for good luck? You touch your head when you say touch wood. Let me know where you're watching from and if you say touch touch wood when you touch your head. Touch wood, everything goes to plan, guys. And we will be in our new home very, very soon. So, yeah, I hope you've loved this. I hope you've loved this as much as I've loved this. And, yeah, I just wish I could get better footage of the stunning outcome. I appreciate you all and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.